Hello aspirants, welcome to daily news analysis by Shankar IS Academy. Today's date is 8th September 2021. The list of topics chosen for today is displayed on the screen. We have also provided page number of these topics in various editions. Interested aspirants can go through them. Now let us begin our discussion. First, let us solve this past prelims question. This question was asked in prelims 2020. See, there's a reason why I've chosen this question. Today we will be discussing a map related article. So in order to have an idea what kind of questions are asked in prelims regarding map, I have chosen this question. It will give you a perspective. Now look at this question. Consider the following pairs. The left side has rivers, the right side has the seas. 1. Mekong, Andaman Sea. 2. Thames, Irish Sea. 3. Volga, Caspian Sea. 4. Zambezi, Indian Ocean. Which of the pairs given above are correctly matched? A. 1 and 2 only. B. 3 only. C. 3 and 4 only. D, 1, 2 and 4 only. See the correct answer is option C, 3 and 4 only. Only Volga and Zambesi are correctly matched. Pair 1 and 2 are not correctly matched. Mekong River drains into South China Sea, not Andaman Sea. And when we take Thames, it drains into North Sea, not Irish Sea. So both 1 and 2 are incorrect. Only 3 and 4 are correctly matched. Volga drains into Caspian Sea. Zambesi drains into Indian Ocean. See, when we are talking about Volga River, it is the longest river in Europe. It is almost entirely inside Russia. And when we take Zambesi, Zambesi is the fourth longest river in Africa. It is a east flowing river in Africa and it drains into Indian Ocean. And when we are talking about Thames, we know that it is located in England. We have seen in the movies, right? The Thames River near that uh, Big Ben clock. That is the Thames River. It drains into North Sea. And when we take Mekong River, it flows into China and it also flows into Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia and then it flows into Vietnam and finally empties into South China Sea. So these are the basic information regarding these rivers. And the correct answer is option C, 3 and 4. Now moving on to article discussion. Now take a look at this article. This article is regarding Venezuela. See in last year's preliminary examination, we had a question regarding world geography. Have a look at this question. You can see the rivers in the left side of the question and you can see the sea in the right side of the question and they are asking you to match it. They are asking you to find the correctly matched pairs. So we can expect these kind of map based question in prelims. With this knowledge in mind, let us learn about Venezuela from map perspective. See Venezuela is a country located at the northern end of South America. It is bounded by Caspian Sea and Atlantic Ocean in the north, Guyana to the east, Brazil to the south. Colombia to the southwest and west. The capital of Venezuela is Caracas. See, as you can see in the image, Venezuela is entirely located in the tropics over the equator. So it experiences a transitional type of climate. It is well known for its grasslands. See, because of the transitional type of climate, Venezuela supports a wide variety of plants and animals. It has almost 4,000 species of animals and 1,400 species of birds or avian species. Another important point is Venezuela has Amazon forest. See we all know that Amazon forest is located in the South America. It is located in Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Guyana, French Guyana and Venezuela. So remember Venezuela has Amazon forest. Now coming to the water bodies present in Venezuela. See Venezuela is a physiographically diverse country. It has the largest lake in South America. The name of the lake is Lake Maracaibo. Remember this is the largest lake in South America and it is located in Venezuela. Another important point, Venezuela has the world's highest waterfall. The name of the falls is Angel Falls. I know many aspirants would have heard about this falls. It is called Angel Falls. It is the world's highest waterfall and it is located in Venezuela. Another very important point. Now coming to the rivers of Venezuela. See, most of Venezuela rivers drain into Atlantic Ocean. The most important river in Venezuela is River Orinoco. This river drains into Atlantic Ocean. This river covers almost 76% of Venezuela. So it is the most prominent river in Venezuela. It is also important to know that the Orinoco River and its tributaries are the major transportation system of Venezuela. Now moving on to the next important topic, the peak in Venezuela. What is the highest peak in Venezuela? Pico Bolivar. This is the highest peak in Venezuela. 
see uh, when it comes to map based question approach it like a trivia and facts just remember the highest peak the rivers where it drains those kind of basic facts will help you in elimination in prelims now coming to the natural resources in venezuela venezuela is known for its oil reserves see venezuela's oil revenue accounts for about 99% of export earnings so this country is heavily dependent on its oil reserves apart from the oil reserves it has natural gas iron ore bauxite diamonds and other minerals but it is heavily reliant on oil reserves for its income so these are the important points regarding venezuela see in this discussion we saw about the neighboring countries of venezuela we saw about the amazon forest in venezuela the countries which have amazon forest we also discussed about lake maracaibo we also discussed about river orinoco we discussed about peak pico bolivar and finally we discussed about the natural resources of venezuela now let us move on to the next discussion now look at this editorial this editorial is regarding anti google law passed by south korea what is anti google law why was it passed this editorial is a discussion on these topics let us see these points in detail the syllabus relevant to this article is displayed on the screen interested aspirants can go through it see on august 31 South Korean Parliament amended Telecommunication Business Act. This amendment is called as Anti-Google Law. What is the amendment? See the Anti-Google Law prevents dominant app store operators. Who are the dominant app store operators? Google, Apple, okay. They are the dominant app store operators. The Anti-Google Law prevents the dominant app store operators from forcing south korean app developers to use their in store payment systems i know some aspirants may be confused by this statement let me explain with this in an example see most of us have smartphones imagine your smartphone in your smartphone you have a play store in play store you have lot of apps there are free apps there are paid apps so imagine you are downloading a paid app this app is 130 rupees and you are paying for this app how will you pay for this app see when you are downloading the app the payment options pop up this is how you pay for that app see in google and apple play store this payment option is only apple pay or google pay you can't pay by other means this is the issue the apple and google have deliberately kept this method this is because they want to charge a commission of 30% as i already said you are downloading an app of 130 rupees the original cost of the app is only 100 rupees the 30 rupees is for the google or apple this is the issue in dominant play stores you can pay for the apps only through their in payment system you cannot directly transfer the amount to the app developer through some other means this is restrictive trade practices the apple and google acts as middlemen they control the app developer and they get the commission they charge 30% commission on paid apps this amount is very steep it affects the consumers it affects the app developers as well so because of this huge commission many small app developers are finding it difficult to sell their apps imagine 30% charge for an app you are producing 100 rupees app but apple and google is charging 30% so the app price becomes 130 so consumers will be deterred from buying that app and because of this many small players are getting affected it is against the free and fair trade practice this is why south korean government has passed anti google law the law prevents dominant app store operators from forcing south korean app developers to use their in store payment system so google or apple should give alternate options they cannot push their own in payment system now let us play devil's advocate Let us now see the Apple and Google side of the story. See, according to Google and Apple, they are using this commission for two things. What are those two things? First, see, according to Apple and Google, the Android and iOS has been used for free by the smartphone users. They are giving this operating system for free. According to Google and Apple, they are able to provide the free operating system only through the commission of thirty percent. Otherwise, they may not be able to provide the operating system for free. Again, these are the statements of Google and Apple. Now, moving on to the second point. The second point is regarding the Play Store. According to Google and Apple, 
they maintain the play store environment they protect it from virus they protect it from malware they are maintaining the resources so for this maintenance they are using the commission from the apps they are keeping the digital environment safe so these are the two points given by the apple and google providing free operating system maintaining the play store environment for these two things they are using the commission gain from the paid apps but according to the experts 30% commission is very high they agree with the logic behind the apple and google but still they find the 30% commission to be very high so they want to provide level playing field for the small app developers they want to reduce the commission they want to reduce the commission to 15% according to the experts 15% commission by google and apple will be justified but google and apple did not agree this is why south korea has passed anti google law this law challenges the restrictive trade practices so according to this law google and apple can't force the south korean app developers to use the in store payment system see south korea is not alone let us take united states of america in united states of america a company called epic has sued google and apple it has sued these corporates on the grounds of restrictive payment practices now let us take india even in india google and apple are facing lot of legal challenges the concept of in app payment system is now reviewed by the competition commission of india so this in app payment system is now being challenged by many countries even european union is now challenging this in app payment system so these are the important points highlighted in this editorial this editorial highlights that the legal system is fighting the restrictive trade practices now many countries are going against the giants like apple and google to ensure free and fair trade practices these are the important points highlighted in the editorial with this we have come to the end of the discussion in this discussion we saw what is anti google law why was it passed by south korea we also discussed about the in app payment system the issues with in app payment system we also discussed about the google and apple story regarding the in app payment system and finally we discussed about the countries which are challenging these practices very important topic from mains perspective now let us move on to the next discussion now take a look at this article this article is regarding incoys see incoys is conducting a 3 day regional workshop this workshop will be covering the role of media in the tsunami early warning chain apart from this this workshop will also be covering about standard operating procedures and timely and effective warnings so this is a gist of this news see this news is not that important but incoys is very important INCOI stands for Indian National Center for Ocean Information Sciences. This organization is very important from prelims as well as mains perspective. In prelims you can expect a direct question, in mains you can use it as value addition. So let us see about INCOI. See another important point is INCOI is as ITEWC, Indian Tsunami Early Warning Center. So in addition to INCOI, let us also discuss about ITEWC. Let us start this discussion. What is INCOIS? As I already said, INCOIS stands for Indian National Center for Ocean Information Sciences. It is an autonomous body. It was launched in the year 1999. The most important point: it is under Ministry of Earth Sciences. This point is very important. Please make note of it. You can expect these kind of statements in prelims. Another important point: INCOIS is located in Hyderabad. Now we have a question: Who is the chairman of INCOIS? secretary to government of india for ministry of earth sciences this person is the chairman of incois now let us discuss about the main aim of incois see incois is mandated to provide the best possible ocean information and advisory services it conducts lot of ocean observations it conducts lot of systematic and focused research and based on this it provides best possible ocean information and advisory services now we have a question who are the target audience of incois to whom incois provides these informations they are industries government agencies scientific communities and the common people these are the main target audience of incois see another important point incois is a unit of earth system science organization see earth system science organization is an executive arm of ministry of earth sciences 
this organization is responsible for the policies and programs of ministry of earth sciences and in coice is a part of earth system science organization please make sure you make a note of it these kind of statements you can expect in prelims in coice is a part of earth system science organization which of the above statements are correct these kind of questions are expected in prelims now moving on to the service provided by in coice first comes the potential fishing zone see the identification of potential fishing zone was one of the first advisory services started by in coice see isro has a satellite called ocean sat this satellite is used for ocean application and based on the real time data provided by the satellite in coice identifies the potential fishing zones in coice provides real time data with ocean color and imagery to identify the potential fishing zones this is the main function of in coice the service was mainly started to help the fishermen to identify high quantity fishing zones in order to maximize their catch the service will be highly beneficial to the fishermen now moving on to the next service provided by in coice indian ocean forecasting system what is indian ocean forecasting system see in coice predicts the surface and subsurface features of indian ocean in advance see we all know that india is a peninsula covered by water on its all three sides so it is important for us to know the state of ocean in advance when it comes to commercial activities then only we can plan it better this is where indian ocean forecasting system comes into play it predicts the surface and subsurface features of the indian ocean and this service is provided by in coice moving on to the next service ocean observation group see ocean observation group measures and monitors the temperature and salinity of the indian ocean to be precise it measures and monitors the temperature and salinity of the upper 2000 meters of the ocean what is the intention behind it see through this observation we can understand the evolving nature of upper ocean we can understand the pattern of climate variability so this is another important service provided by in coice ocean observation group now moving on to the most important service tsunami early warning system itwc so you can expect direct question from itwc this component of in coice is very important see let us go back to 2004 in 2004 india experienced one of the worst disaster we experienced tsunami it caused lot of destruction to lives and property so in this backdrop our indian government decided to put in place a early warning system for tsunami this is itewc see tsunami early warning system is a network it consists of seismic stations bottom pressure recorders tide gauges and 24 into 7 operational tsunami warning center so all these components form a network this network is called as tsunami early warning system they provide the early warning regarding tsunamis they use the latest communication methods they use vulnerability modeling they use decision support system so to this advanced technologies they provide timely advisory to the vulnerable community so that we can be prepared for tsunami i hope aspirants can follow so these are the important points regarding in coice very important topic from prelims as well as mains perspective in prelims you can expect a direct question in mains you can use it as value addition in your mains answer for example if a question is regarding disaster management you can highlight the role of in coice in your mains answer so that's the end of this discussion now let us move on to the next part now look at this article this article is regarding e shram portal see recently ministry of labor and employment launched a portal called e shram portal it was launched on august 26th and according to this news as of now 20 lakh unorganized sector workers have registered with the portal this is the gist of this article in this backdrop let us know about e shram portal let us also discuss some of its objectives very important topic from prelims perspective see as i already said ishram portal was launched by ministry of labor and employment very important point now we have a question why was this portal created see this portal was developed to create a national database of unorganized workers it is the first ever national database of unorganized workers 
it will include all kinds of unorganized workers migrant workers construction workers platform workers gig workers etc it will be the first ever national database of unorganized workers see this database will be connected with aadhar the main objective of this portal is to improve the life and dignity of the unorganized workforce of our country now we have a question what kind of information will be collected in this portal name occupation address educational qualification skill types and family details these kind of information will be collected from unorganized workers and included in this portal by collecting this information we will protect and safeguard the interest of unorganized workers we can also provide social security to the labor force in the unorganized sector through the data in this portal we can enact and implement various labor laws we can regulate the terms and condition of service and employment of workers so this is why this portal is very important it has noble objectives see some other objectives of this portal are given here for a reference interested aspirants can go through it now we have a question who can register in this portal what is the eligibility see any worker who is working in unorganized sector and aged between 16 to 59 is eligible to register on eshram portal this point is very important the age is 16 to 59 and the person should be working in unorganized sector for example migrant workers gig workers platform workers agricultural workers enrega workers fisherman milkman asha workers anganwadi workers street vendors domestic workers rickshaw pullers people who are working in such unorganized sector and if they are aged between 16 to 59 can register in eshram portal so these are the important points regarding eshram portal very important topic from prelims perspective with this we have come to the end of the discussion in this discussion we saw about eshram portal the ministry which has launched eshram portal the objectives of eshram portal and the eligibility of eshram portal now let us move on to the next part of our discussion now look at this article this article is regarding bitcoin see according to this article el salvador has adopted bitcoin as a legal tender this is a gist of this article so in this context let us see about bitcoin now what is bitcoin see bitcoin is a cryptocurrency so let us know what are cryptocurrencies see in simple words cryptocurrencies are digital files which are used as money it is created the same way as cryptography is created see understand this a cryptocurrency is a digital or virtual currency the term crypto in cryptocurrency refers to various encryption algorithms and cryptographic techniques that safeguard these currencies see cryptography is a method of storing and transmitting data in a particular form so through cryptography only those for whom it is intended can read and process it this is the biggest advantage of cryptography and cryptocurrency use this technique of cryptography cryptocurrencies are designed with encryption now we have a question how can we buy cryptocurrencies see cryptocurrencies can be bought using credit card it can also be mined we can mine cryptocurrencies what is mining see in the context of cryptocurrencies mining means solving some equations if you solve the equation through the use of computers you will receive the bitcoin or cryptocurrency this process is called bitcoin mining or cryptocurrency mining now let us discuss the features of cryptocurrency see cryptocurrencies are decentralized networks based on blockchain technology blockchain is a specific type of database in which data is stored in blocks this is why it is called as blockchain these digital blocks are chained together in a chronological order see the blockchain uses a decentralized way of storing data so that no single person or group as control all users collectively retain control in blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies are decentralized networks based on blockchain technology so we can say cryptocurrencies is not controlled by a single person or group the users collectively retain control over cryptocurrencies this point is very important another important feature cryptocurrencies are not generally issued by any central authority this is because of the decentralized structure of cryptocurrencies so because of this decentralized structure cryptocurrencies exist outside the control of governments and central authorities 
this is another important feature they are not issued by any central authority they exist outside the control of governments and central authorities so these are the features of cryptocurrencies now let us discuss about the advantages of cryptocurrencies see using cryptocurrency we can transfer fund directly between two parties there is no need of third party for example like bank credit card company this kind of third party is not required in cryptocurrencies this is the first major advantage moving on to the next one it is impossible to counterfeit or double spend the cryptocurrency we can't create fake cryptocurrencies so this currency is full proof and as i already said this currency exists outside the control of central authority so it does not have any major regulations it is consumer friendly these are the advantages of cryptocurrencies now let us discuss about its disadvantages see cryptocurrencies are semi anonymous in nature in cryptocurrency transaction we can trace the transaction on the account but we can't trace the account owner the owners of cryptocurrency are not easily traceable this is the first major disadvantage so cryptocurrency may facilitate crimes like drug trafficking prostitution terrorism money laundering tax evasion etc because of its untraceable nature the evil doers of society may use this currency now moving on to the next disadvantage as i already said cryptocurrencies are not backed by the government so it does not have the same protection the money enjoys in a bank account now moving on to the next disadvantage cryptocurrencies are highly volatile in nature for example take bitcoin bitcoin almost become 19000 dollars in december 2017 so many people started investing in bitcoin but after december 2017 it started collapsing in the following months it almost become 7000 dollars so from 19000 dollars it became 7000 dollars so it is highly volatile in nature this is why many economists believe bitcoins to be short lived this is another major disadvantage of cryptocurrencies see cryptocurrency is a important topic from prelims as well as mains perspective in prelims you can expect a direct question for example you can expect a question like which of the following statements are correct and they can give the features of cryptocurrency and they may ask you to find the right statements so make sure you have a conceptual understanding of cryptocurrency what are cryptocurrencies what are the technology it uses the blockchain technology what are the features of cryptocurrency it is decentralized it is not issued by any central authority and also know the advantages and disadvantages of cryptocurrencies we discussed all these important points in this discussion i hope it is beneficial for the aspirants now let us move on to the next topic now take a look at this topic this topic is regarding autism see medical conditions and diseases are asked in prelims So in this context let us learn about the important points regarding autism. It can be beneficial in the upcoming prelims. This is because in the last few months autism has been constantly mentioned in news. So it may have caught the attention of the examiner and this topic has a high chance of being asked. Now let us discuss about autism. See autism is also called as autism spectrum disorder ASD. This disorder is a condition related to brain development. This condition impacts our person perceives and socializes with others it causes problems in social interaction it causes problems in communication so this is autism spectrum disorder see autism can be diagnosed at any period of a person's life it is a condition irrespective of the age it can be diagnosed at any period of a person's life but in most cases the symptoms usually appear in the first 3 years of the person's life See now aspirants may have a question why autism is also called as autism spectrum disorder why this unique name why it is called as spectrum see it is called as spectrum disorder because it doesn't follow the same symptom or pattern autism has wide variation in the type and severity of symptoms one autistic patient will be severely depressed whereas another autistic patient will be slightly depressed another autistic patient will have no depression so the severity and the pattern of symptoms has a wide variation this is why it is called as spectrum see spectrum is a huge range right so the autistic patient will have symptoms anywhere in that spectrum the severity and pattern will show a wide variation this is why it is called as autism spectrum disorder see autism is a lifelong illness but with proper treatment and support 
we can enhance the person's life we can increase the autistic patient capacity to function so treatment and support is essential for autistic patients so far it doesn't have a cure but proper treatments are available now let us come to the most important part what causes autism see we are yet to know the exact causes but many experts believe environment biology and genetic play a huge role in the causing of autism let me repeat environment biology and genetics but we are yet to know the exact causes many experts believe environment biology and genetic to be the cause for autism now moving on to the next part symptoms of autism see as i already said autistic patient will have difficulty with social communication they will have difficulty with social interaction they will have restricted interest they will exhibit repetitive behaviors some autistic patient may also experience see problems they may show irritability so these are the general symptoms associated with autism but as i already said it is a spectrum the symptoms and the severity of symptoms in autistic patient shows wide variation some other symptoms of autism are highlighted here for your reference interested aspirants can go through it so these are the basic points regarding autism with this we have come to the end of the discussion in this discussion we saw about what is autism why it is called as autism spectrum disorder what are the symptoms of autism what are the causes of autism whether treatment is available for autism whether cure is available for autism now let us move on to the next topic now take a look at this article this article is regarding take a break project see take a break project is a scheme of kerala it was announced as a part of nkkp nkkp stands for nava keralam karma padathi see nkkp is an initiative that aims to bring basic socio economic service in a qualitative manner so as a part of this initiative take a break project has been initiated by kerala i hope aspirants can follow now let us see what is take a break scheme see take a break scheme is a network of roadside refreshment centers these centers will have toilets they will have snack bar atm counter and parking lot see we all take long journeys we drive for hundreds of kilometers so these kind of centers ensures that travelers can take a break and refresh themselves between long journeys this is the purpose of take a break scheme it has been set up to facilitate long journeys it will be beneficial for the people as well as the tourist so far 100 toilets facilities have been inaugurated under this scheme these toilets are state of art it is equipped with sanitary napkin disposal system it has bio waste storage system and it also has disinfectants now let us come to the most important point see the maintenance of this toilet complex will be ensured by kudumbashree mission and enrega mission these two schemes will ma- ensure the maintenance of these toilet complexes this is the gist of this article see enrega scheme stands for mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme and kudumbashree is an important initiative of kerala these two schemes will ensure the maintenance of the toilet complexes under take a break scheme so let us know about kudumbashree see kudumbashree is an important initiative of kerala so it has a high chance of being asked in prelims and you can also use kudumbashree as value addition in your main answer see kudumbashree is a malayalam word which means prosperity of the family this program aims to eradicate poverty and empower women so in mains if you have question regarding women empowerment you can use this program as value addition now coming back to kudumbashree see kudumbashree is formally known as state poverty eradication mission spm it is registered as a society and it is registered as state poverty eradication mission spem this program was set up in 1997 its membership is open to all adult women this is the most important point but another important point is the membership is limited to one membership per family so put it in simple words one adult woman per family can become a member of kudumbashri see kudumbashri program includes two components kudumbashri mission and kudumbashri community network now let us see about kudumbashri community network this network has three tier structure what are those three tier structure neighborhood groups area development societies 
community development societies these are the three structure of kudumbashree community network see the main aim of kudumbashree community network is to bring women to the grama sabhas this network wants to include women in the political participation so by bringing women to the grama sabhas we can bring the needs of the poor to the attention of the local governments this is the main aim of kudumbashree community network See, as of March 2021, Kudumbashree has a total membership of 45 lakhs women. So it is one of the largest women networks in the world. This is why the scheme is very important. Though it may seem like a state-oriented scheme, its impact is very huge. Another thing is you can also use it as value addition in your main sense. Now coming to the most important point. See, the Union Ministry of Rural Development. as recognized kodumbashree as the state rural livelihood mission under the national rural livelihood mission so the central government is recognizing this program it has brought the program under the state rural livelihood mission we all know that the state rural livelihood mission is under national rural livelihood mission and the state rural livelihood mission has recognized the kodumbashree mission this is why this program is very important please make sure you learn about it don't skip it just because it is a state program so with this we have come to the end of the discussion in this discussion we saw about uh, take a break project we saw about nava keralam karma padati next we discussed about kudumbashree in detail what is the meaning of kudumbashree what is the aim of the kudumbashree when was it started who can be the members of kudumbashree next we saw about the components of kudumbashree program kudumbashree mission and kudumbashree community networks and finally we discussed about the recognition given by the central government kodumbashri is recognized under state rural livelihood mission this recognition was given by the union ministry of rural development so these are the important points regarding kodumbashri mission please make note of it you can use it as value addition in your main sense even in optional if you have a topic regarding women empowerment you can use this scheme as value addition moving on to the next discussion Now let us move on to reference articles. I will look at this article. This article is regarding Singur Nisam Sagar Dam. It is also about uh, Manjira River. See, we have already discussed about these dams and river in great detail. Go to our sixth September two thousand twenty-one daily news analysis. You can find this topic. Now moving on to the next article. This article is about reservation policy. Again, we have discussed about reservation policy in great detail on. 6th September 2021 daily news analysis interested aspirants please watch that video now let us move on to the next part of our discussion now moving on to practice prelims question first question consider the following statements first statement kudumbashri is a community network having three tier structure that covers the entire state of kerala second statement area development society monitors neighborhood groups and provide them support on activities including setting up and running micro enterprises which of the statements given above are correct a one only b two only c both one and two d neither one nor two see both the statements are correct as we have already discussed kudumbashree is a community network and has a three tier structure and it covers the entire state of kerala so first statement is correct moving on to the second statement the second statement is regarding area development society see area development society monitors uh, neighborhood groups and it also supports them on activities like setting up and running micro enterprises so both the statements are correct the answer is option c both 1 and 2 now second practice prelims question consider the following statements first statement the indian national center for ocean information sciences is an autonomous body launched under the ministry of earth sciences second statement it is a unit of the earth system science organization Which of the statements given above are correct? A one only, B two only, C both one and two, D neither one nor two. See both the statements are correct. Inquiry is autonomous body launched under the Ministry of Earth Sciences. So first statement is right. Now moving on to second statement. It is a unit of Earth System Science Organization. See Earth System Science Organization is executive arm of Ministry of Earth Sciences, and Inquiry is a part of. Earth System Science Organization. So both the statements are right. The correct answer is option C, both one and two. Moving on to the next question. Third question: The disease is related to brain development that impacts how a person perceives and socializes with others. 
it causes problems in social interaction and communication the symptoms usually appear in the first three years of the person's life itself which of the following is that disease a alzheimer disease b autism c bronchitis d hepatitis c take option a alzheimer disease alzheimer disease does not affect kids it is usually found in old people so we can eliminate option a moving on to option b option b is autism this option is correct anyways in order to be safe let us see option c as well as option d what is option c bronchitis see bronchitis is an inflammation on the lining of bronchial tubes so this option is not right take option d hepatitis hepatitis is inflammation of the liver so we can eliminate option d as well so the correct answer is b autism autism is a brain development disorder it affects our person perceives and socializes with others it causes problem in social interaction and communication the symptoms usually appear in first 3 years of the person's life fourth practice prelims question consider the following unorganized sectors one asha workers two anganwadi workers three enrega workers four gig workers five migrant workers which of the above sectors are eligible to register on the ishram portal a 1 and 2 only b 4 and 5 only c 2 3 and 4 only d 1 2 3 4 and 5 only see as we saw from the discussion all the above sectors are eligible to register on the ishram portal if a person is working in any of these sectors and he or she is of age between 16 to 59 they can register in ishram portal so the correct answer is d 1 2 3 4 and 5 only all these sectors are included the main practice questions are displayed on the screen interested aspirants can write the answer and post in the comment section below if you like this video click like if you want to post a comment post a comment in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ayes academy channel thank you all the best Thank you.